Hello, I'm Julie and this is Elegant Sufficiency. In this video, I'd like to talk with you about the Kashi, what it is, why it's worth doing and how you can do it without it costing you very much money at all. This is the Kashi brand. It's not a lot to look at, but it does an absolutely amazing job. The Kashi brand is inoculated bran and it's inoculated with a living organism. And when you add that to your food waste and you put it into an airtight environment, um, it starts an anaerobic process. The Bokashi brand starts to ferment and break down the food, the food waste, in a way that allows you to then add it to your composters. Um, and what this means is that you can add foods but you can't ordinarily add to your composter. So this includes things like cooked food, cooked pasta and rice, meat, fish, bones, um, all sorts of things. Um, and it just, it basically speeds along that process um, of it breaking down. And because it's essentially being pickled, uh, fermented, um, it's not appetising to rats and rodents. If you do worry about composting in your garden because of it attracting vermin, um, this is going to definitely help to prevent that from being a problem. We have a two bucket system where you have one Bakashi bin which you're actively filling and the other one modelled by Kira as she loves to do and the other one um, will be sitting fermenting and you want that to ferment for about two weeks and this is what it looks like when it has fermented, when it's ready to go into the composter. Not very pleasant, I'm sorry, um, but it might be quite useful for you if you're looking to do bokashi or if you are doing some finding problems. So this white coating on the surface shows you that it has been working, it's active, and then you can put that into your composter or bury it straight into the ground. We found from experience that the bokashi process takes a bit longer in winter. And I think that's probably because of the, um, the colder weather conditions. So we've kind of changed what we do slightly. We used to keep the bokashi buckets in the garage. Um, and now the one that we're resting that's fermenting, we put that one into the front garden and it sits in the sunshine. So hopefully the warmth of the sun um, will help to kind of speed things along a little bit. We've also decided that we're going to get a third bucket um, and that just allows us to have a little bit more breathing space. If some weeks we do have a bit more waste um, than others that are going into our bokashi, um, it means that we can rest the buckets for a long enough time before we then swap over and rotate the whole system. And it's quite handy that we are doing that because it means that now I get the opportunity to share with you how it is that we make our bokashi buckets. drilling on top of this tarp simply because I don't want to um, have any shavings of plastic from the drill um, going into the grass, being pecked by the chickens and adding microplastics to my own environment. With the lid, it's a simple case of just cutting the rim off with your scissors and then you're left with a nice flat disc which you can use to press down on top of your bokashi. Some people use a plate but I figure we've got the spare lid, might as well put it to use. Um, and then <clears throat> that will help to keep the air from making contact with your food waste and bokashi which helps it to just do that process a lot faster. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be good enough. It really is as simple as that. You just need two buckets with tight fitting lids in whatever size you like. I think mine are 20 litre buckets. You drill holes into the base of one, you cut the rim off the lid of the other, and there you have your own Bokashi bin. So, this is my bin with a base. 
this is the one with the holes in. I'm going to slot it inside and they fit snugly and this is the amount of space that I've got at the bottom here which is plenty for draining off. Now I just need to put something in it. So this is our kitchen caddy um, and we just put everything into here, we're not fussy about it at all. I'm so sorry this is not pretty but it's food waste. So in here we've got um, some leftover um, rice and chicken, we've got some tomatoes that I tried to ripen in the window and some of them didn't quite make it, they kind of went wrinkly. Um, there's bits of bread, there's some ham. Um, we try not to create food waste obviously, that's kind of um, a good starting point but it's inevitable and I think that we need to acknowledge that we are going to create food waste so we need to have a system that works to help us deal with it. So this is what we do. So it all goes straight in there. I'm very hopeful this is the least attractive video that I will ever do. Um, I'm going to do one about chicken keeping soon and mucking out so I may be lying there. <laughs> a lot of what we're doing here is not very pretty, but um, it, it needs doing and it matters. It really does matter. So this is my hairbrush. Um, any organic materials, think about other waste that you have in your house. It's not just about food. It's anything that is organic um, that can be broken down into the composter. So your hair from your brush is one. Fabric scraps is another. So if, like me, you're into um, the whole kind of homesteading experience and you like to do a lot of crafting and things in the house as well as the growing and you know raising that you're doing in the garden, uh, then you might have some um, raw natural materials from crafting that you've been doing. These are 100% cotton. I use a lot of fabric for making wax wraps, which I sell on Etsy. Plug link. Um, so any scraps that I have that can't be used for other projects. I can put those straight in as well. Then all that's left is to add a nice sprinkling of the bakashi. You want to cover everything with bakashi, have a nice even layer going across the top. Um, and this will help to make sure that it's going to be doing its job evenly um, and basically creating the world's most disgusting lasagna. So you add a layer of um, organic materials and food waste and then you sprinkle your bakashi on top and then you do it again and again and again and each time you are placing the um, lid down on top so you're squashing it down, you're keeping the air out by making sure you've got a nice sealing lid that you put on the top of it. And then over the course of a few weeks, this is going to fill up and fill up and fill up. And when it's full, you rest it for two weeks. It will have that white film on top that I showed you before. And then you can either bury it in the garden or pop it in your composter and rotate and rotate. And that's how it goes. My family and I have been doing this for, it's going to be two years now, I think. And it has been the single biggest change that we have made on our journey towards zero waste. And it feels good to know that um, our waste, our food, Kind of byproducts and things are going back into the garden to grow more food so as much as we can realistically do in our context you know in a, in a garden and a house in a residential area we're trying to create that sort of closed loop system with our own food consumption and food waste since we started to bakashi our food waste we have seen a dramatic drop in the amount of um, volume in our general waste bin so that's a bin that for most people would go into landfill and for us does go for incineration um, and even though it is incinerated <coughs> which can make you feel a little bit less guilty about filling that bin up um, it feels so much better to know that it's not just being burnt and it's actually being used for something really positive right here in our own garden it's nice to know that there are no smells there's no wet leaks if you have to go back into your kitchen bin your general waste bin it's not disgusting, it is no different to the recycling bin except the contents are things that cannot be recycled. So we're still trying to work on reducing our waste in other areas but knowing that there's no food waste going into that particular bin is absolutely fantastic and I think that's probably one of the best reasons why um, you should be using Bakashi in the first place. Thank you so much.
much for watching this video. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to look at the videos that I'm making. Um, and I really hope that this has been useful for you in some way. Um, it might be that you're able to kind of, you know, pop out tomorrow and buy a bucket and get cracking on with it. Or perhaps you're not quite at that stage yet. Um, but either way, I really hope that this has been informative and maybe inspired you to do something like the Kashi in your own space. I'm very new to YouTube. Um, this is my third edited video, my second with music, uh, my first how-to guide. So everything that I'm doing here on my channel is very, very new. Um, I really appreciate it if you do take the time to leave me a comment down below, let me know your thoughts, ask me questions. I really do read everything and I will get back to you. If you like what you see here, then please do think about subscribing. So if you want to receive notifications about all the videos that I have coming out, then hit that bell as well. Thank you.